and then welcome to the third installment of my Deciphering Secrets hands-on project. Today we are going to be preparing the parchment leaves for writing and we are going to need the following materials. The choir is made for week 3, a ruler, a compass, a pencil, a knife to be used during pricking, and a crochet hook to be used during ruling. The mise en page. As we learned in Unit 4 of our class, the mise en page is the design or page layout of the book. Copiers would create precise designs for the area where the writing was going to occur. Therefore, creating the frame and the text area of the manuscript was a vital step in medieval manuscripts. I begin by loosening the choirs to begin working on the designs of the harmonic surfaces. Since there were four different designs taught in the class and we are experimenting, I decided to practice all four of them before transferring them on the membrana. And once the measurements match their mathematical results, I transfer them onto the choirs. Here are the demonstrations for the four designs. The Secret Canon, Phi. Following the instructions of Unit 4, I transferred onto the page the exact measurements for the Secret Canon design. This was for me the best of the four options because uh, it took care of the margins for me. And uh, I did not have to worry about having the gutter and top margin be smaller than the bottom and the outer margin. For the rectangle of Pythagoras, I measured the margin and I made it two triangles with a 3 to 4 to 5 ratio. The resulting measurements were 12 and 9, which divided give out a quotient of 1.33333 and so on. The Golden Rectangle The Golden Rectangle was the most challenging one to make. Uh, this is a perfect square that is made and then cut in half. This half is then measured by the compass diagonally and projected upward. Its final proportions have to equate to a quotient of 1.618. And finally, the proportionally growing rectangle. This was my own personal favorite to make. After measuring the margins, we begin with a perfect square, although this time we do not cut it in half. But the diagonal line cuts across the square and then it's projected upward, giving it a proportion of 1 to the square root of 2. After setting the designs, we move on to pricking. Once the designs are in place, pricking will be performed. As seen in the examples, it was a practice used to rule the lines for the text area. In the demonstration, I am using a knife to prick the outer margin. Uh, this was practiced in later manuscripts, although older manuscripts had the pricking done down the middle of the frame, called in-text pricking, as seen here. And our final step, ruling. The last step to finish our pages was to rule the lines on the parchment. On the demonstration, I used a ruler and guided by the pricking holes, I draw my lines with a pencil. On the picture example, I used the dull head of a small crochet hook to indent the lines on the parchment. Here you can see the back of that page where the lines are raised in furrows. Lastly. Here are the final results. After pricking and ruling, here are the samples that I have made on my choirs. Here, there is a page designed with the secret canon phi. The second page is the result of the rectangle of Pythagoras, one with the pencil ruling and the next with indented ruling. The third example is of two columns made with proportionally growing rectangles. 
In this last example, I made two columns composed of four golden rectangles. And now we have reached the end of this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Carla, and I'll see you next week when the writing begins.